What's going down everybody and welcome back to the Altered Art Tutorial Series. Now today, I've got a little skill I'd like to teach everybody. This is called a splatter effect. And I've got four cards here. I'm going to show them off right off the bat because they all have a little bit of a different kind of splatter. Now let me just see if I can get them where they need to be. So we've got four pieces. I got the camera zoomed in a little bit so you can't see them perfectly, but we're going to look at all four of them individually. Three of these were auction pieces, the top three, and then the bottom one, this cathartic reunion, was a commissioned piece that I wanted to show off. Now, we're talking about splattering today, and I'm going to teach you the tools. I'm going to teach you the techniques. First of all, we're going to look at this space card. Now this is a style that I typically do. I do them on commission. I do them for auction pieces. I do them for my own decks. And I see lots of space pieces where people maybe they try to hand do the stars and it just it doesn't look random enough and the stars are always too big. Now we're gonna see how to do a nice wash evenly coat the card with stars or, or or splatter and then we're gonna move into those other pieces because the splatter techniques used are a little bit different. So how do we get a full wash, a complete even randomized wash over the entire card? You can do it two ways and the two ways involve using two different brushes. The first brush, and the one I would recommend for doing an even coat of splatter stars, is a guy like this. Now, I'm sure it looks pretty beat up, I'm sure it looks pretty old and junky to most people, and that's on purpose because what you have to do is use fairly watered down paint, paint that's really runny, and, and I've got some right here. I've got some brown paint so you can see it on this white paper. The other brush is a brand new type of brush. And, and you can see that the bristles are all coming to a nice fine point. I would not recommend this for doing star painting because you're going to see that the splatter comes out kind of in a line. And you don't want it to come out in a line. You want it to come out all over the whole card. So let's take a look. Now, there's two things you got to remember here. You've got to remember that you've got to get your brush really wet or your paint really watered down. And you got to remember, like with everything we do, you're probably going to have too much paint on your brush. So you got to get most of that off and you can go back to this pile and use it again. But what we're going to do when you have a full load, that is paint from the very end of your bristles, all the way to the hilt of your bristles or, or whatever that thing's called. I always forget. People are going to let me know in the comments. You get that all saturated with watered down paint and all you have to do is flick it. And you flick it from a high enough height that you get this splatter effect. And you can see that that splatter effect is about the same size as a card. You can see the pattern generally goes from about here to generally about here. And that's about how big the card is. Now, when you do that, you can, again, go back to this pile. You can change the angle a little bit that you're flicking at. Sorry, my hands are in the way blocking everything. But you're going to get more splatter. Now, generally, that's going to get paint all over your entire card. So I would recommend that you cut out some masks. This would go, of course, over the text box and type line. And then I've got another couple masks that are just this but for the name line and I put those down on the card before I start for for old border cards you kind of just have to use what you have I've got spare cards that I cut out with little scissors to try to mask things the best I can or I mask off large chunks of cards with sleeves and you can see these sleeves have been greatly used to uh, to great effect they uh, they look fantastic now, if we move over to this brush, remember the brush that has the fine point on it too, still, this is, this is a brand new brush. We're going to load it up, get it saturated, and then when we flick it, because it's, because it's straight, it's going to let go of paint generally in a straight direction or a straight manner. And sometimes that's what you want. But generally, when you're doing a space painting, you're going to get too much stars all in a clump. And I just thought when you do want that kind of effect, all the stars in a clump, you use a, you use a toothbrush. And this gets really messy, but generally you do it the same way. You load up maybe a one-fifth or a quarter of, of the bristles with paint. 
you get them loaded up and you take it like this and you have to find the best way to aim it down onto the card to get it where you want it. But this is generally what you're going to get. And you can see that it's a clump, but you can see that I've organized that clump or that splatter into a line. And sometimes that's what you want. If you're going to do like a galaxy that's really far away, that's what you can do. Now, for these two cards, we actually did the splatter in a little bit of a different way. I used this same old crappy brush, but instead of flicking it with my fingers, I didn't want it all over. I only wanted it strategically in a couple small areas. And in some cases, let's say instead of star splatter, you're, you're wanting to do like a blood splatter effect, like on a vampire card or something. You want it strategically directional or in a certain spot, like coming out of the vampire's mouth or just on the text box in a certain direction, like a blood splatter. You're gonna start off the same. You're gonna get your brush saturated. You're gonna get this spread open crappy old brush. And now what you're gonna do is take this same layer mask that you made, hold it right nice down down close to the paper. I'm moving the paper so you can get a clean spot here and you're going to flick it with the paper. And you can see that's the kind of effect that you're going to get. Now I did way more right here than I showed you on those two retro frame schematic cards, but this is the kind of effect that you can get. And the drier the paint, the more it's going to be blots like this or, or just little dots the wetter the paint the more it's going to look the more it's going to hit the the paper or the card and spread itself out to make it look more like a smear and that leads me kind of the, to the next thing is you can actually do this do this and then you can smear it a little bit and that's that's another effect that you can do right even even if you did some splatter like that and then you wanted to put some fresh paint down and, and smear it a bit, you can do that kind of effect as well. Now, the one precaution I would give you when doing really any splatter painting is either set something up to block other stuff that you don't want splattered. And I'm not just talking about masks like this that you put on a card. This can go everywhere. So if you've got lots of cards on your desk, just be careful. And this particular kind where you're flicking on the edge of the card, it actually creates a little bit of a catapult if you hold the card down here and do this. Paint is going to go everywhere when you do that. So you notice that I was holding it right here and just doing this and really low towards the very close to the card. Now, the final thing is when you want something that's got a little bit bigger of a, of a pattern or a splatter pattern on it. You can see the red on this card is a lot bigger, more than I could hold, more paint than I can hold in one of those little tiny paint brushes. So what you're going to want in that case is a brush kind of like this. Something that's bigger, you can see the difference in the two, two of the brushes that I've shown off. You can see the difference in size. This one is going to hold a lot more paint but the technique is the same. You get a lot of paint on there, a lot of really wet paint and saturate that brush. And then you can either hit it against your finger or you can flick it again. And you can see that the, the splatter pattern that you got from that is a lot bigger. I find with these big brushes, you want the paint even more wet. And then you can see there's lots of it there. The bigger you go, the bigger splatter you get because the brush can hold on to so much more paint and then when you give enough force to the brush, it'll let go of bigger blobs. And this is the kind of stuff that I really like to, to smear. And keep in mind that the piece of white paper I'm using here isn't this, is, is going to absorb a different amount of paint than a, than a card would. And you can really make kind of whatever effect you want when you smear and splatter and, and, and basically just make a mess. It's kind of fun to do this, but it does give you some pretty cool effects like these four cards. So I hope you learned something. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Let me know what other new techniques or, or, or something that you're having trouble with. And I'll do my best to address it in a future tutorial video. See you next time.